Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, I'm going to share with you 10 free things to use in your junk journals. Now, these are categories we're talking about. There are literally thousands of free things you can use in your junk journals. I have put them into categories. I listed tutorials for each category in the description box below. And I guarantee you, you will be inspired and you will look at things with a different set of eyes after watching this video. So, Let's begin. Okay, let's start with something a little less obvious. Napkins from a restaurant. They can be any color and any thickness, it doesn't matter. And I'll show you what I did with these. See how cool this looks? It looks like old leather. And all this is, is a cereal box at the back. And I glued some of these napkins on top really messily so that it's got these little raised ridges and then I painted it black and I added a little bit of gold and that looks really really cool as a journal cover and you can see this one here I've got it to show you I have used the same technique but instead of using napkins I used tissue paper from packaging so that works too and if you want to see the technique it's exactly the same one that I used on this one here on this journal and I have a tutorial step-by-step -step tutorial so you can have a look I will link it down below and it's exactly the same way that I created this but instead of tissue paper I have used napkins on this one and then we can also use that for things like this you know book pages I've got a book page very simple and I just glued on some of the napkin went over it with a little bit of distress ink to create this really uh, old kind of looking page and I can glue this onto some clear paper at the back it can be a journaling spot it can be little embellishments in a, in a journal I, I mean the possibilities are endless these are just some of the examples I've got to show you and I've really I keep showing this because I really like it I think this would look really good uh, as, a, as an actual journal as an actual journal cover okay next thing we have here is tea bags used tea bags so if you tea dye your paper or if you drink tea keep these let them dry and then you just simply open this up get rid of the tea or keep the tea the loose tea inside because you can use that too and then you are left with this and I have used these in many different ways. I'll show you some examples. I have tutorials on all of these. So I just simply place it over some magazine images to make them look really vintage. You can see these ones here. It's just a, you know, image from a magazine and the tea bag that I placed on top made it look really old. And same with maps and atlas pages. They look really really cool and vintage and they look amazing in journals as pockets for example see how cool that looks on a page it's a little pocket you can pop things in there you can embellish this further add a little something there looks really cool I will link that tutorial down below and all of the categories will have uh, tutorials to go with them and everything is linked down below in the description box next thing I have are, for example the playing card so you can see this is how the playing card looks before it's been vintaged and I also have a tutorial on these and they look really cool I even made a little booklet with these but I have since sold that booklet in some sort of a pack but take a look if you like making vintage looking journal and uh, vintage looking embellishments this is perfect and another thing that I have to show you is this handmade paper you may have seen this tutorial before so on here I have got the tea bags over here and these little bits in there is like dried herbs or dried flowers or I have actually used loose tea from these bags on here because who's got time to make actual handmade paper you know using a blender and all that sort of stuff when you can make a faux looking handmade paper or I should say a faux handmade paper here are some other examples of the faux handmade paper look and I've hacked into this one using it for something and then as you know usually one thing leads to another and you make a full journal cover out of your faux handmade paper there's so many things that you can use in your journal making and even like leftover threads you can see here threads you can see in all of my faux handmade papers I've got these uh, threads I mean I'm not keeping every single little bit but you know when you're sewing and you have some loose thread you can 
keep some of it and use it in your handmade paper. Category number three is cereal bag liners. So I use these to protect my surface, you know, when painting something, but I also use it for things like this. For example, I have a tutorial on this. I will link it down below. I made these pockets. There's two pockets. I just used book page. I decoupage some napkin on there and I used cereal bag liners to create this see-through pocket on both sides. And here I did it. Same thing. I didn't decoupage any napkin onto the book page. I just pop that on and sewn around it and create these pockets. You want to make sure if you're using it for your journal, you want to make sure to really wash the cereal bag liners really well because you don't want any, you know, food stuck on there. And then even things like this, for example, I don't use a lot of these. I usually just recycle them in plastic bag recycling. But here's just an example. I have cut out a little snippet over here and let's pretend this is a page in my journal and I created a little tab with a staple. So really simple. But if you had a few of those in a book sticking out, kind of like this, let's pretend this is a page in my journal. And you know, you've got a few of those random little bits sticking out. I think it looks really cool. Of course, you can just use uh, off cuts of anything, fabric, paper, whatever you have. But you know, I, I'm just trying to demonstrate that you can get creative with, you don't have to have the special stuff to be creative. And, you know, to be honest, once you start looking at everyday things with different set of eyes and you start seeing the possibilities, you start creative, creating, and then one thing leads to another and you have something beautiful like this. I just love this so much. All right, let's move on. Okay, next category is boxes. So this is a pretty obvious ones that most of us are already saving, but bear with me, I'll give you some inspiration. So cereal boxes, let's go with this one. I have created many journals using this cereal box. or well, not this particular one, but a cereal box. This journal is made from a cereal box. This journal is made from a cereal box. This journal is made from a cereal box. You don't have to go out and buy books that you can then alter and make into journals. You just start with what you have. You can have massive journals with really wide spines like this one. This one is quite a big journal, uh, quite wide. Uh, it's got five signatures in there. Or you can use little tiny boxes to make mini journals. I've got a few of these and I have made mini journals before. So it's really fun to see what you can get your hands on and what you can create. This is a little box from something that I purchased from Ikea. And I actually made a journal with using that box because, you know, it's a ready-made cover. And I just got rid of these bits, cut them off, you can see, and created this cute little journal. And this was made years and years ago before my YouTube days using a packaging box. Here's another one, you know, perfect size for a little journal. You can get your napkins from a restaurant. You can get some glue, glue it on, get some really cheap $2 paint, no big deal, right? And create a journal that looks like old leather. Have a little book, book plate here, perfect. I mean, the possibilities are endless, right? Okay, let's get on to tissue boxes. Okay, I keep these as well. I can make tags and all sorts of things. You may have seen this video. I will link it down below if you haven't. These are all of the things that I have made with just tissue boxes, full journals with just a tissue box, little flip out folios. You can have a look in that, at that video and you'll see all of these things that I have made using tissue boxes. What else we have? We've got a little mini journal here using a tissue box. We've got some tags and pockets and things like that. We've got another little folio over here and we've got another journal. Let's have a look inside. Just a mini junk journal, you know, that I made using a tissue box. And pop some stuff in there to make it fun. Look at this one. I want to show you this one. If you've seen the video, you would have seen this, but it opens up and does all sorts of things, very interactive, which I love, full of little goodies and stuff and belly bands and pockets and all sorts of things. And this actually comes out over here. I just love little surprises like this. See? What else do we have? Here's another one made from a tissue box. 
some tags, some shaker tags, all sorts of things. I love the windows and the tissue boxes. So much we can do with that. And if you want to explore further, the videos are linked down below. And I have also done a tutorial on making this as well. So I will link that down below as well. And then we've got things like perfume boxes, shoe boxes, skincare, little boxes and little window pretty boxes like this when, when especially kids uh kids boxes like kids toys they have little windows like this and all sorts of beautiful things so things like these these you know you can you can't potentially make a journal out of this because it's got this hole but you can use little bits here you can make tags let's see what can we make with this let's see kind of looks like a keyhole so potentially i could cover it with that napkin painted black add a bit of gold and put a little key here it looks like a you know a key lock with a key on a journal you know let's play pretend like this and then we've got a little key here or it can be top of a tag or it can be a little uh, little tab in a on a page and embellished somehow so what i'm trying to say is that you, you look at things and you try and work out what you can do with it all sorts of little ideas will pop into your head and then if this is a really pretty gold color some boxes are absolutely beautiful you can cut out shapes if you don't have uh, punches you know you can cut it out by hand little circles and things like that for example this these little bits and pieces in here i have cut out by hand these circles and you know i have them this is before i had punches and i don't have punches that are these this big size so you can see this one irregular circle cut out from some something and i've got it all in here and then i can do make little things like for example let me show you this this journal was made many years ago i didn't have any special stuff back then and i really love it because look at this just some paint on tags and then cut out circles this is from i re clearly remember this is from a gift bag look how beautiful that is glitter paper this flower I drew by hand it's not you know nothing to brag about but i drew it cut it out and it's in there these are all painty papers and stuff that i did with my kids fingerprints with my kids but i really wanted to show you the tags and the little you can see here the shapes the little heart shape that i cut out by hand and it's all from you know boxes and cereal boxes and stuff like that you can see here and i was playing around with paint just painting stuff just mark making see this there's a little tab this is all hand cut circles from cereal boxes that i have uh, attempted to make this altar tag this is when i first started my journey and i thought i was into art journaling but i'm so terrible at any sort of that stuff drawing painting that i gave that up see circles here you know all sorts of things and this journal is also made from a cereal box and some rolled paper beads over here and this is all hand stitched i have a tutorial on hand stitching so i wrote art journal and then hand stitch it's so easy if you don't know how to do it i'll link the tutorial down below it's so easy but really effective here's another one here create i hope that you're having all sorts of ideas pop into your head when you look at this it looks like it belongs in the recycling bin right and most of the people that live in your house will agree with the fact that this is rubbish but to us this is not rubbish and as soon as you start looking at things in a different way and you look at something like this and you think how can i reuse this what can i make out of this the ideas will just you know you just start making and the ideas develop as you are making you don't have to know the steps in advance you just get in there and you start okay let's move to packaging bear with me okay all right there's so much i want to show you let's start with these things some of the clothes that we buy this is from a school uniform uh bedding that we buy a big you know quilt cover sets and and dunas and all that sort of stuff and they come in these bags and we can use them for storage and all sorts of stuff so uh, i don't uh, i do like to keep them so i can, i have used this packaging and i have a video 
and I have made these beautiful I can't even they, they're not even coming up how I want them to so I made all sorts of different sizes of these storage little pouches and it looks really cool here are some fabric off cards that i've got in this one you can make these and sell little packs on etsy and it looks really cool you are reusing you're not sending things to landfill and the presentation it's quite nice here are some paper off cards let's say i'm selling this journal and i think this bag might be a little bit too small but let's just have a look here we go so the bag is definitely a little bit too small for this journal but you know you get the idea and you send it to your recipient and it's just a little extra touch just an idea i will link this tutorial down below and i really for some reason i actually really love these bags and i have been hoarding them ever since i made them which was a couple of years ago even this one it's already ready made kind of Thing. glue some flowers maybe on top of that and you don't have to do any sewing or anything and it can be a little a little journal protective little pouch if you're taking your journal with you you might want to protect it put it into something like this all right let's move on quite quickly so next thing i've got here is bubble wrap okay this is not the prettiest thing you've ever seen in your life i admit let's maybe just hide that page and you can see here I've used bubble wrap for backgrounds it's a good activity for kids for yourself you can make all sorts of little uh, mark making and now that we're talking about mark making it brings me to my next thing so you will see here I have a sole of a shoe from my son when he was a little boy and this makes really good cute marks on a piece of paper this is why i don't use printables you see i mean okay this is not my best work but you know what i mean things like this little foam sponge that, that i can you know use to make backgrounds these uh what are they called cork things from wines uh, little lids from skincare and stuff like that for making circles i think maybe you know i used this one as well to draw around it and then i can cut a perfect circle this is from coffee this is from salad tape sticky tape look all sorts of stuff perfume bottle perfume bottle you know for making marks i'm not using these as much anymore but it's an idea but I, i'm using this one i want to show you this one so these ones are just from a cork like this that i have cut down and it's it serves like a stamp and it leaves a pretty cool background and you know when you look at it like this it doesn't look that amazing but when it's used in an overall project let's say for example these come to mind uh, i've done a little bit over here you know it adds that extra touch that you're looking for at that moment if you're using it in a journal you know to, you can add a little something a little pocket on a page a really simple idea and then when you go with it it adds the extra touch to a project you can see in this journal here i use this sponge to make marks on a page here's some more bubble wrap over here on this page these lines i've used the corrugated this is also from something or other and i have used this corrugated side added a bit of paint or distress ink and then went over it with a page and that's really cute uh, cool to use to create lines just straight lines in a journal for writing here is another page where i use this sponge thing you can see the exact size and then for these lines this is another thing that you can use these come from gift bags and you know those things you dip it into paint and you create some lines you know this is more for art journaling but can definitely be used in junk journaling this is cut out from a tissue box so yes all sorts of things let's move on to the next thing which is cellophane from flowers if you receive flowers keep the cellophane this actually i got from my local florist you can go in there and they always have off cuts like this that they just throw into bin into the bin and this is really they've got beautiful patterns on them and then you can use them to make things here are some examples i did this last night just to give you some ideas here are some this is like a shaker uh, bookmark here's a little pocket 
and I just used that cellophane. I did sew around. When you're working with cellophane and, and uh, plasticky things, glue doesn't tend to work the best. And then I also made this one. Here we go. This is from a wedding invitation and it actually said wedding invitation here. So I've just covered it and I made a little thing. It's just a thing that I made. Bound in some pages over here for journaling and you can see in there, made a little pocket using the cellophane. And there we go. It's just something different that we can use in our journals. And then, of course, if you're buying that quilt cover set, you want to keep these boxes because look perfect for a journal. You just need to trim it down and there you go. The cover is done. You know, you decorate it, obviously, but that one's pretty self-explanatory. Now, this one here, these are baby wipe flip tops. Once the baby wipes are used up, I just unglue this, take it all, take it all the way off. And I will insert a photo here of what I've done with this. And I will also link down the tutorial. I, th I, I have a tutorial, like, like a walkthrough of how I created these uh, little cover secret door kind of thing. So I had them on journals. And, you know, once you paint over it, you embellish it. You don't even have to paint over it. You can just embellish this, take, get rid of this here, glue it on using hot glue. Hot glue works. And you have a little secret compartment. You can have a little pencil in there, which is what I did. A little booklet. And get creative. And then, of course, if you're buying clothes, you know, for your kids, for yourself, all of these tags, there's some really interesting ones that you can use for your journals. I was planning to do a little video showing what you can do, but look at all of this. Just There's just so many, so many different things, so many different shapes. This one's got a brad here. How cool is this? Love from, cover this up, put a little flower, put something, you know, and you've got a tag for your journal. This one as well. I'll, I'll, I've been keeping these because I wanted to do a tutorial, but it just hasn't happened yet. But keep them. Tell your friends to keep them. Just don't, you know, don't become a hoarder. Don't keep everything like me. Okay, our next category is junk mail envelopes and stamps. But let's start with junk mail envelopes first. So most of us get these junk mail envelopes. Our bills come in them and all sorts of stuff. And they're really fun to use. Uh, in the crafting, in our crafting. So some of the things that I've made with them are these journals. I have a full tutorial on making these and I made them using junk mail envelopes. See, you may have seen that tutorial. Look at this purple one. And yes, I've made these using junk mail envelopes. I have also made these uh, pocket type things using junk mail envelopes and I have a tutorial on this as, as well. So there's a pocket here and then a pocket here. And they can be embellished in many different ways. And we are just using and repurposing. These are all fabric scraps and, and bits and pieces that I am, uh, you know, repurposing. Look at this one. How cool. So I already have tutorials on these two. And I'm also working on a tutorial, my next tutorial. Here it is, a sneak peek. And it's all using the uh, junk mail envelope windows. So projects that you can do with this area. And also naturally in this category, we can have the stamps as well. So cancelled stamps and old stamps. If you're lucky enough to find some vintage stamps in secondhand stores. I found this whole thing in a, in a thrift shop. Or even something like this. This is actually a, a catalog, a stamp catalog that I have found and I started cutting into. So they're not actual stamps, but they're images of stamps. And I use them as little embellishments or little focal points on a piece. So for example, let's see over here. Here's a little embellishment, and then if I just pop one of these on top, it kind of completes it, you know, and gives it a finished look. So they're always cool to have. 
And then I've also got all these cancelled stamps. Someone gave me this, I think my mum gave me this bag of stamps. So ask your friends and family, you'd be surprised how many things people uh, have that they don't really want anymore. All right, moving on to the next category, which is greeting cards, birthday cards, Christmas cards, birthday bags, gift bags, and all that good stuff. So with the greeting cards, I'll show you what I did with my greeting cards. So we're coming back to this journal again. Okay, you can see it better like this. So this whole journal, all of this inside, all of it is greeting cards and they were all used, uh, written on greeting cards. So some of them were mine, some of them my mum has given me and they, you know, old greeting cards from 20 years ago, whatever that my mum didn't want to keep anymore. So then what I did is I covered them and I covered them with paint and just made an art journal or slash type journal. Uh, junk journal I wanted to say and you can see everything is painted over and then I can go in and I can glue whatever you know write on it I can make this into a glue book and everything inside is made from greeting cards some of them I've glued paper on top like this just glued strips of paper on top wallpaper some stickers and bits you get the idea and it was a lot of fun thinking on how i'm going to embellish each page and how i'm going to cover the writing and i made little pockets and things look at this like you can see on this one you might be able to see i'm not sure but this one a little bit of writing is coming through you can't read it but and just a little bit of the writing is visible and then what I did because I used paint some of the pages were sticking together and I just ran a candle over them so I had a little round candle that I just ran over the pages you can also use beeswax I don't know where my candle is and I just kind of ran over the pages like this with my candle and that leaves that film and then your pages don't stick together there's just so much stuff in here just so many little things made from uh, greeting cards and I'm sure you have a box somewhere of greeting cards or you can make a journal like this and not cover the writing you know see that mark making from those little round perfumed bottle tops or skincare tops this one's pretty cool little mini notebook so there we go that's that one so that's just one of the things you can do with those greeting cards you can also chop off the portion that's been written on like here there was a portion that's been written on and then like on this one for example this can just this alone can be your journaling spot or you can make these are not written in I just pulled them out to show you you can make journaling spots you can make little bookmarks put a little bit of a ribbon here it's i'm sure you've thought of this yourself already but i'm just pointing it out that greeting cards have some of the most amazing images at the front not particularly these ones but there's lots out there so uh, go into your box of gift cards birthday cards and so on and uh, greeting cards and ask your friends and family as well if they have something they want to part with and off you go and then also of course gift bags look these are just absolutely beautiful to cut into punch out shapes make little booklets out of them look at this one this can be a whole journal i can make a journal out of this cover just this cover uh, just this uh, bag reinforce it you know beautify it add a book plate what a shame uh, you know for these things to go into recycling or the landfill so even this i'm not holding on to every single pe uh, little bit that comes into my life because you don't want to overwhelm yourself with stuff but keep an eye out on things that are really beautiful that you can use in your journals so our next category is a very wide category it includes magazines it includes catalogs it includes travel brochures and maps and all sorts of things junk mail that comes in in your you know mail so there's a few things that i have done and i'm going to show you but just want to show you this one this is a catalog and have a look at this page look how cool is that and man, uh, uh, of course i can use this in a journal 
Okay, this one. Really nice, good, thick acetate in this catalog, so I'm def definitely going to use that. Let's have a look at the magazines. So this is a scrapbooking magazine, and I seem to find so many of these in crafts, I mean, uh, secondhand stores. And they're really very cheap. They're bundled up and really cheap. So what I do with them, I have shown this on a number of occasions before, but, and I do this with not just the scrapbooking magazines, but any magazines, like, you know, any, Im any images that I can find that I can use. And then I cut them out. And I back them onto tea dyed paper and I sew around. This is actually a, a promotional flyer for a nursing home but if you didn't know that this is for a nursing home you wouldn't you wouldn't think it just by looking at this it only says at the back but I've covered the back and I've sewn around it says take time out for yourself and it's a perfect journaling spot for my journal the same as this this was also for a nursing home and then just things that I find interesting in magazines and there's so many th interesting things in magazines look at this oops there was a glitch and like this this is embroidery so you can always use original images that you find in magazines but you can't go and copy the images so you can't scan them and then reuse them so it's okay for you to cut out an image out of a magazine use it in your journal sell the journal it doesn't matter as long as you're using the original image look at this one this would have to go in a really large journal so you can use all that sort of stuff Next thing I wanted to show you these, uh, I have a tutorial on this, which will be linked down below. So I'm basically using parts of a picture or images that don't quite make sense, but I don't want to throw them out. So this was a picture of a large pillow and I didn't really want it in my journal. And so I cut it up into little pieces and then I made these. Uh, they can be mm, tags, journaling spots, or my intention was book plates. So this is quite too busy uh, on, on this journal, but just demonstrating that was my initial thought for these they can be glued onto a cover and then you don't have to worry about anything else for the cover you've already got an embellished cover so even things like this you know you might find part of an image that's really nice what are you going to do with this can't do much with this but you can you know see this is how it looks kind of without any of the embellishing you can have a look at that tutorial and it will make sense you know, even let's say, not really, but I would use this because I don't like these colors. But if I just cut this square out and then I can do something with that. So that's that. And then you've got your things like uh, travel brochures and things like that. I've already hacked into this one. And it's got really cool maps that you can use. I really love maps. And especially if you vintage them up, you use some napkins over the top or you use some tea bags over the top, make them look really vintage. Looks cool. And then look at this. This, this was from my local theater and they were just advertising what's on and the back looks like something I can use in my, in my journal making. I also wanted to show you this box. If you watch my channel, you may have seen this before. So these are all flowers, paper flowers. I have a tutorial. I will link it down below. And these are all, I actually used a cookbook. So let me see if I can find an image or, you know, um, even without an image, just a writing. But here we go. Let's, let's have a look at this one. I can't even tell what it was. It was some, it was a cookbook. So there was uh, lots of vegetable pictures of vegetables and things like that. And you can't tell looking at the flower. I really love this one. So yes, you can use you know magazine images for this sort of stuff as well you don't have to have any die cuts or special things i think you can see on this one this is some type of a green leafy vegetable right here so you can see on there but i think this one is my favorite so another thing that we can do with magazines brings me back to this journal again and these here i'm sure you've seen them and i'm sure you've made some these here are paper beads rolled paper beads and they look much better in real life than they do here on video but i rolled up some paper this is actually scrap scrapbook paper this here is a magazine page i rolled it up and i covered it in some sparkly nail polish see that wonderful sparkle on there 
And there we go. And I've used these in many of my projects, these beads. There are lots of tutorials on YouTube. I don't particularly have one because there's already lots. Uh, but all you need is some magazine images, some really colorful ones like this, for example. So magazine images, and you do need a little bit of patience, and it's a perfect activity to do in front of the TV. You just sit there, you roll up some paper beads, and then you have beauties like this to use in your journal making. Oh, and of course, another thing that I for forgot to mention is cutting out phrases and words that you can use to express yourself when you're journaling, when you're making pages in journals you can use whole sentences oh, this is from book pages I have a video on these cutting out little sentences and making poems not necessarily poems just something that makes sense but yeah look at this this is from a scrapbooking magazine I think creative project so yeah catalogs have some cool little you know sayings and words like looking at this catalogue, you can't even see, but this writing here is raised. So I can cut that out and use it. Let's see if there's something else. Just quickly. Even these images. You know, once you start looking and seeing things that you can use, you'll be overwhelmed. Because really, you can use pretty much anything. You really can. I think this looks beautiful. I can cut this out and make, back it onto some tea dyed paper and make a journaling card from this. Or make a tag from this. There, there's really no need for me to purchase printables, which is why I don't. And it's why I don't work with printables either, because I find that this make, keeps me, uh, you know, creative. You know, helps me think, think outside the box. Okay, next category we have is old clothes. And I'm going to show you some examples, because it's quite an obvious thing. So I'm going to show you some examples to keep you creative. I had to get out so many things for this video and now I'm going to have to put it all back. All right, so let's have a look at this, for example. This is an old leather jacket, but it's not leather. Uh, it's a faux leather jacket. And over time, this is what started happening to it. So I couldn't donate it. Uh, I wouldn't have cut into this if I could actually donate the jacket. But there are all these elements to the jacket that I can use. Even if I can't use the whole pocket, I can use this I can use this as a charm and I can take them all off and use them now this one too at the back same thing happened with this jacket as well it started kind of coming apart like this so I know not to buy this type of thing anymore but I can use the, the parts that are still in good order and I can pop this on a journal I can make this into some type of a closure and then look at this lining can use this as well it's perfect I've already cut a bit of that out. Now look at this lining. This is from another jacket. I think that was from that first one I showed you. Look at this. Like some vintage uh, magazine images. And I can definitely use this. Let's see what else we got. Even cutting out little pieces like this to use for tabs and tops of tags and all that stuff. I've probably uh, got too much stuff in here. I think I might have to, I can't possibly use up everything that can be used up. So I might have to become a little bit more selective. This is cool. A little bit more selective on what I keep or just keep a portion of the thing and not the whole thing. But I look at this and I think it's such a shame for this to go into landfill when it can be used for something. Look at this cool zipper things, whatever they're called. I can take that off and dangle it on the side of my journal. And then you can look for things like lace on your clothing. This was on the bottom of one of my tops. It was a white top and it was stained and nothing could get the stain out. So I just took this off and I'm keeping it. And I used the other portion for rags. And then, you know, just cutting out bits and pieces of fabric like this. So using your journals for different types of things. I always take this, these off as well. They can be like little charms. This, these little bling pieces came off of some leggings and I actually used this just the other day, which is why I remembered to show you. And I used it on this little book plate. Let's see how it'll look on this one. All repurposed stuff. Junk mail envelope, these legging things, you know, on the sides that look like brads. All right, moving on. And then you've got things like this, 
So uh, my mom has a friend who is a seamstress and she actually gave my mom some of the offcuts that she has. So you can always go to your local seamstress and ask because they have all sorts of this stuff that they end up throwing in the bin because what, what are they going to do with it? So this is an, a sleeve that's been altered and, and it's got these beautiful sequins on it and it's perfect. We can use that. All right. So next one I have a tutorial on. So these are, I'm going to link the tutorial below. And these are jeans and pants pockets that I have used in journals. I've actually made a journal as, as well using them, but I don't have the journal anymore. I'll see if I can insert some photos. But uh, basically, I just cut out the pockets from jeans. And if you have kids or grandkids, they go through clothes very quickly. They ruin their clothes. So the jeans might have hole on, on the knees, but, you know, the back pockets are in perfectly good order. The buttons are in good order. So I think there's a lot of beautiful things that you can use from kids' clothing in particular because you'll find one section of the, of the piece ruined and everything else is fine. So it's just a matter of looking. And then this one is, you know, I've popped some tags in there. Here is another one of those that I was showing before. See, I just put it on there. See how cool this looks. It just adds an extra touch. And I made that into a pocket as well there. And then this was also, I'm going to show you. So you can see this also, uh, this came in, in that bag of offcuts from the seamstress. And then because I can't really use this, but I thought it kind of looks like that's crunched up sari silk. So what I did is I cut out sections like this. See? And they actually look really nice as like little tag toppers. Or, you know, basically I just use them instead of sari silk. Uh, I mean, I don't have long lengths to wrap around the journal, but to use on top of tags like, like here, instead of this for example uh, it looks cool and then i mean look at all of this i mean i'm probably going a little bit overboard here but look at all of this look at all these wonderful pieces of clothing and all these wonderful offcuts that would have otherwise ended up in landfill some lace that was cut off of a top look at this one so beautiful there's just such beautiful materials out there and I'm sure that you have clothes that you no longer want and that you can't donate. And if you don't, you have friends, you have family, just let them know. And I also wanted to show you this one. So this one was, it's not bedding. You can use bedding if you have old sheets and things like that. These were actually like wrap around little blankets and you wrap your baby in them. So uh, that's what I used this for. And then... When I no longer needed them, I just ripped them into strips like this and I tea dyed them, put them in some solution, tea dyed them, and then I just dried them and here they are. So it's not one long strips, it's maybe a meter or so strips or a bit longer. And then I use these as closures when I'm using, when I'm making a really vintage looking journal because it looks very vintage that's what i use it for and i also use it a lot on my tag toppers and all sorts of things you know whenever i need a little bit of something I can make little ruffles with this and all sorts of things so it's there it's uh, next to me so whenever i need it i can just get a little piece off or however long i need and off i go oh and also i forgot to mention lots of clothing comes with something you know some type of beads or like I, I showed you before these gems that I got off of the old leggings and so all those things the sequin even so all of that can be used okay and our last category is old jewelry broken jewelry belts bags wallets I don't have a wallet here but I do have a, a video on making a journal out of a wallet I'll link it down below I'm not going to spend too much time on the old jewelry because it's pretty self-explanatory. You've got all of these pieces kind of to play around with and make into charms and dangle off spines and make tassels. I have a video on uh, making some tassels. I'll link, link it down below. But you can find all sorts of things. This one's broken. Now look at this one. 
you don't even have to do anything you just take it off off the chain and you pop it onto the spine that's how I use it let's pretend this is spine of my book I can't put it in all the way because this is here but like this for example and then it dangles off the top on the spine which is actually exactly what I did on this journal that I showed you before and you can see this charm here this is from a necklace and it's actually just a paper clip like that and I clip it onto that spine and it stays there and that's a one of those shank buttons very cool oh now that we're here you can see I have used some type of a chain you can see it's from a necklace and that's actually my close up, uh, closure for this journal. You can't see it because of all of the fluffy stuff but there's my closure for the journal. Just using a broken chain. Kind of like this from this one. A broken chain. So you can get this is off of a bracelet. This is a bracelet and I get these little chains off to use in all sorts of different projects this is uh this is also from some necklace but lots of bags come with these as well these chains they can be used for closures on a journal or dangles off the spines and things like that things like this like you know this can't be worn as a necklace but it can be part of a tassel if that makes sense look at this one as well just so many wonderful things that we can use and there's so much of these costume uh, jewelry out there and they even sell them by the bags you know in thrift stores okay the next thing that you can also look at is some old or broken handbags I don't have one to show you that I'm ready to actually cut up but I just wanted to point out a few things this bag is in good condition I wouldn't use it anymore but I'm going to give it to my daughter or donate it we shall see but if I was to cut this up I would get all of these sections off these this this flap you know this here all this good stuff all this hardware I would get it off so you can see this was actually taken off of another bag and I can use this on the spine of a journal I can hang a tassel here I wish I had one to show you but I don't at the moment and then on the inside and then all of these things even the belts even the belts you know as much as I can I would keep even the lining I mean I wouldn't go all overboard because I already have so much stuff but the point is you know it's there it's available if you have some broken bags around you or bags that you no longer like or that are no longer you know nice this one here I purchased second hand it wasn't very it was very very cheap what I wanted to do with this one is to make a journal out of it but I haven't done it yet because for some reason I really like it I would never actually wear it take it with me out but it just feels I think it reminds me of something in my childhood and I feel bad to hack into it but how easy would it be to remove this here and this here and sew in a signature and I have a journal with a closure and it's done it will be so easy but I just can't bring myself to do it and then we have things like belts you know this is an old belt or maybe this came off of a bag who knows and I can use this if anything I don't even have to use this I can just use the hardware and make that some type of a journal closure same thing with this here this I don't know I could have that on the spine of my journal to hide the binding I can glue it on like that I can weave a ribbon through these little holes here and all of the holes are reinforced and this actually if I remember correctly and I do because I just remembered it this actually came off of some boots like knee length boots uh, they were uh, completely ruined but this is the lace part and I thought I'm just gonna cut that off and I did and actually this is from those boots as well this was on top of the boots and that was on the side so I mean this looks pretty worn but I kept this because of the hardware I want to keep this hardware and I want to use this look at all of the things that are around you and you'll be seeing all of the possibilities and potentials this was also a handle on a bag and I'm not entirely sure what I can do with this one because it's quite stiff but my initial thought is to have some elastic tying these two ends together and then it can be a, a 
close on a journal like this maybe if i have some gold elastic it can be this can be the front and then i can have something hanging here off of the gold elastic good to have something like that in case it comes in handy right and here is also a belt from a bag that i have kept i probably can't use the whole thing in the journal but this for sure i can use this and you know having things like this around you this is how the creativity grows because you take an object like this or you take a bag like this and the bag is ruined and you're thinking what am i going to do with this and like what can i actually do with this you could try and get the whole pocket off and have that you know if it's a larger journal maybe have that on the front there are many things that you can use that i haven't included in this video like you can literally go outside let me let me go outside okay so this could literally be my 11th category i couldn't get too creative because i just ran outside and picked up a few things that you can use in a journal and you can put some wire around this and add stuff to it and have it on on the front cover of your journal like look at nature themed journals look at gibbet neary's work okay you know and i've seen these things used on spines and and used as part of the binding as well branches like this so you know you look at nature and getting inspiration from there and i just picked this up because i had a thought when i was outside i made all of these i'm going to link it down below the video uh, all of these beautiful embellishments using leaves and i didn't even some of them i did press but most of them i didn't even wait for them to dry look at that you can make bookmarks and sell them at craft fairs look just went outside and picked some things this one's a little bit freaky and i think i might end my video on this note curiosity must be kept alive once you start looking at things in a different way and experimenting and ask yourself with everything that comes across your path how can i use this what can i make with this it might lead you who knows where you know to a good place so i hope that you guys found this video informative i hope your creative juices were flowing and you got some new ideas and you thought of ideas that i haven't even mentioned haven't done before please let me know what you guys think let me know uh, of something that I didn't mention that you have been using for your journal making. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.